My first memory is of art, and that was when I was three years old, my third birthday. Um, I realized what the primary colors were, red, yellow, and blue, and with the primary colors, you can do anything. The entirety of my memory is of making art. My experience with art started uh, in Chicago. Before coming to Somerset, Kentucky, uh, I was an auto mechanic. I went to school for auto mechanics. Then I went to body shop school and, and uh, airbrushed, did body work. There's been one studio after another, and then this studio, which is the, the biggest one so far, committed to sculpture and ceramics. Later on down the road, I was like, hey, you think we could, uh, we could do some, some sculpture stuff? He's like, eh, let's try it. So we tried it, started referring to the sculpture studio. It's of the moment. It's a lot of things that had been converging in my artistic life and in the work that Jesse and I do. A floor plan or a diagram of the gallery spaces. I broke that into the panels that go around the walls and I laid them out in a strip. And then this story, which is one of emergence and nurture and it has themes. They're, they're, they're presented in a meaningful order. If you, if you circle around the space, each conjunction forms a new entity and that's the way this works as you go through the space. So the space there will be kind of encoded too with the work and that'll be something for people to explore and to play with. As we looked at the origin stories for some of these images, like the blue cats that we made out of car hoods that led us back to the Olmecs and the history of growing corn, as we looked at those images and thought about this very basic thing about art is that it's luxury. Art is luxury. A lot of this, this show connects with uh, my own history with having teachers who are indigenous people, you know, the, 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 the tribal cultures of this country and of, of Mexico have many, many cultural richnesses to share in them. And in those, you definitely see this idea. This image of the blue cat spread out into my work. Much of my work is connected with lucid dreaming or with dreaming period. Both what's called reverie, which are daydreams, and, and night dreams, which are wh where you feel you're inside, you know, you're inside the dream. Then. Dreams where you're conscious is a special kind of dream. You know you're dreaming when you're dreaming. That's a lucid dream. So um, that, that part of the thing, it was an important part of, the, of that process. I usually have the image very strongly in my mind going in, but I'm unfocusing my eyes and I'm following what I call tracers in front of me, where they just appear on the canvas, and I really am not aware of what I'm doing while I'm doing it. That's a deal where that you just like close down your connection to the outside world and you try to envision what the story is telling about, you know, and you are in that world and you're experiencing that experience um, and you're not really aware of what's going on outside you. So there are paintings and um, that will be in the show. I painted quite a few blue cats in my period of time since this image first started appearing and generating in my art. So the idea of painting new ones was pretty, pretty natural thing. Within the studio itself, the collaborative aspect of what we do here. So when we started, we were, uh, I had a friend, he had a junkyard and we were buying car hoods, uh, really cheap. So we bought all the car hoods that we could buy and, uh, and uh, plasma cutting them out. We were making cats. So we were plasma cutting out cats and, and uh, yeah, that's how we started from the car hoods. And uh, a history back from uh, an uh, idea and dreams that Dan's had on, on Blue Cats. The smell, there's gonna be a scent in the air, and whenever you have that scent in your nose, you're gonna remember the Blue Cats. So we go through a few days of talking and sketching out. Um, 
we'll do that a few more days and then uh, we'll bring it onto the table. We'll sketch it on the steel, plasma cut it out, uh, grinding, buffing, get it all prepped, weld it all together and make sure it's got plenty of flow and go with it. Then uh, if we're hand painting it or powder coating it, we go through different processes of just depending on which route we take on the, the painting part of it. A lot of times people think about painting and sculpture as a more solitary um, act, and it can be. And at this show especially is a lot of collaboration. Um, and some of those are invisible. It's, it's interesting to people who have values about these things to see that they're taking some kind of form in the contemporary world. In the ceramic studio, it came down almost to a single necessity of inventing a new blue glaze. Art is luxury. So you should always look at any time that I think that you're presenting luxury in its pure form. And we've distilled it like a dewdrop in this thing, you know, of there's a, it is a dewdrop of luxury. You have to look at who in the community it, it does not have. And what don't they have, you know? They don't have shelter or they're battling addiction, uh, you know. That's when art becomes uh, a powerful, important social force. When it reminds us to share the luxury. And so that's the message in a way of this. And by having water, the water that the corn needs, the water that these jaguars, baby jaguars, jump out of, you know, the jaguars are in the raindrops, they come falling down and hop out and start running around. It's like a cartoon. What what it is? Well, when they see it, <laughs> that's when they'll see what it is. It's, we'll leave it to them to see what they see. Cause they ain't gonna see nothing else like what we're gonna make. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, there's not gonna be nothing else like it. I hope they'll find it memorable. We look at art as being containers to hold your memories. Yeah, old country people had that idea around here of what they call keepsakes. You know, it can be anything. But it's something that reminds you of that day, that person, that place, that part of your life that you wouldn't part with for love nor money. You know, it's like something that's truly, as far, insofar as an object can or should be important to you, it's become a kind of container that you use to hold what's valuable for you. And this show is our or orbular dewdrop holding what is valuable to us in terms of how it can be expressed through blue cats. <laughs> That's the parameters that we work with. If people um, take away that memorable object and somehow that connects to their own dreams or their own values or their own uh, experiences in some way that's meaningful to them and whether they get the art or don't get the art kind of becomes beside the point. Art to me is existence itself. Um, I have been doing it the entirety of my life. I don't really need vacations <laughs> from it, you know, I need more of it. It just gives you the freedom of creativity to do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter what it is, there's no limits to what you can create.